All right, welcome back, class. I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and uh, this is, I would say, the delayed turkey marathon that I was supposed to do so long ago. However, it's almost Christmas, so it's sort of a turkey Christmas New Year's marathon. Uh, my winter break is coming, so I can upload much more videos than normal, so I will try to make use of that time. So... Last time we left off on section number two, number 13 of test number three. I should have said it the other way around. And today we'll start at number 14. So it gives two inequalities. And it says, if t and k are positive integers in the inequalities above, and t is greater than k, what is the value of t? Now, this is one of those problems where you're not going to listen to what your tutor usually would teach you about these problems because even I would tell you in a regular problem what you need to do that that's my very smart aleck but a little unclear teacher voice what you would do is you would expand this equation over here I'm gonna stop that voice but uh to expand that what is t square minus k square well we could give t plus k times t minus k that works right because it's t times t which is t squared then minus tk plus tk which is zero and plus k times minus k is minus k squared so and we know tk is greater than four so now you would be thinking of a number greater than four in t plus k so trying to do this you would get five times t minus k is less than six t minus k is less than six over five is that really going to get you anywhere it's not because you need to find the value of t which is yeah okay so it's not anything we don't know it yet however if you notice the differences on the first inequality are between perfect squares and it doesn't have to say it however it does say it. In fact, it says they are positive integers. When they're positive integers, obviously, you square them, you get a perfect square. So, let's think of perfect squares. So, the more bigger squares you subtract between, the bigger difference there is. So, let's just state the first few or so. So, there's 1, there's 4, there's 9, there's 16, there's 25, and there's 36. So, they, we need to find out um, which of the difference between any two numbers within here is less than 6. So let's start with the middle two numbers, 16 minus 9. Well, that would be equal to 7, which is not correct. So now let's move on to 9 minus 4. That works. 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. Okay, so 9 minus 1, again, doesn't work because the it's 8. However, 4 minus 1 does. 4 minus 1 is 3. So we know, so 9 minus 4 works, and 4 minus 1 works. So in, these, in the first case, t squared is equal to 9, k squared is equal to 4. So this must be less than 6. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, yeah, that must be less than 6. However, now we need to see whether t plus k is greater than 4. So now we need to square root each one. Let's also do it with the bottom equation, as we will need to do it anyway. So in that case, square root of 9 is, is 3, plus square root of 4, which is 2, must be greater than 4. And is it? Of course it is. 5 is greater than 4. But how about the bottom equation? Well, square root of 4 is 2, plus square root of 1, which is just 1, which is equal to 3. 3 is not greater than 4, therefore, we have our answer. t squared minus k squared is the same thing as 9 minus 4. And the value of t is the square root of 9, which is just 3. So that is choice C. Okay, now we'll move on to number 15, right over here. So, which of the following is equivalent to one, one half 
of 23% of 618 and then there's a lot of a lot of numbers in there so we need to figure out half of 23% of 618 let's start with the easiest one let's multiply half to 618 618 times half which is the same thing as dividing it by 2 is going to be equal to let's calculate this out 3 okay 1 0 uh, 8 9 18 so it's uh, half of 618 is equal to 309 and what we have left is to multiply 23 percent so 309 times 23 percent and quote unquote this is choice a it's 23 percent of 309 so we could since the, I did this problem in such short time let's analyze why the other ones don't work B is 23% of 309 divided by 2. However, you cannot, yeah, they're not telling you to multiply half twice. If you would have multiplied half twice, there would have still, there, a 2 would have still be left. I don't know if I said that right. It, it would still stay as a denominator under 309. So that's not correct. It would just mess it up. C is 22.5% of 618. And now, that's just completely wrong because they changed the entire percentage. D is 23 over 2% of 309. Again, they changed the entire percentage. And E is not even a percentage. It's 23 divided by 2 times 618. So, now we'll move on to number 16. I'm actually going to keep the same color because that problem was so small. Oh, I already changed my color. Uh... Okay, awkward moment. So there's a table here, a function table, if I can see properly. Uh, goes down like this. Okay, this is x, and this is the function of x, function f of x. Okay, so it starts from 2, 3, 4, Five. I think we'll need to draw it a bit further. Six. Yes, we will. Just one cell. Seven. And uh, not so perfect cell, but eight. And function f of x starts from negative one, goes to zero, then go goes to positive two, and goes to negative three, goes to positive four, goes to neg. So we see the pattern here. It's negative, positive, negative. Oh, sorry, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. There is no pattern. Okay, so the qu problem says several values of the function f are shown above. The function g is defined by g of x equals to f of 3x plus 1. What is the value of g of 2? So uh, from this problem, we know that g of x is related to f of x such that g of x is equal to f of 3x plus 1. I always feel weird <laughs> repeating the same thing over and over again, but that's how you learn. So, it says we need to pick the value of g of 2. So, this, this is how you will solve it. g of 2 will be equal to f of 3 times x. So, x we already substituted as 2. So, 3 times 2 plus 1 g of 2 is equal to f of 6 plus 1, so it's equal to 7. g of 2 is equal to f of 7. Now, we so in the function of f, we need to find the x, what f of x equals to when the x value is 7. So if we come to our chart here, 7 is right here. And the f of x value is negative 5. So f of 7 oops, f of 7 is equal to negative 5. And since f of 7 is equal to g of 2, g of 2 is also equal to negative 5. And that is choice A, which is the correct answer. So now we'll go to number 17. Uh, not scrolling. Now it's scrolling with a, lots of mess. Messy, messy. Okay. 17 is a big circle. It's a big circle. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, well, it's not big, but it's better to draw it big, I 
thing because it has lots of it has lots of notations in it. Let's get rid of some of this black. Get get rid of some of this extra. Not what I wanted to do, but it's fine. Let's fill that in. Okay. So there is a diameter that goes through here. And there are points on it. However, it starts like this. Actually, that's a bit too wide. It starts somewhat like this. It's about one third of the main circle. And it's, uh, wow, this is actually pretty tough to draw. <laughs> goes down like this and the same thing from oh, same thing from here okay a little bit complicated uh let's just fill in the shaded part with a darker green and the shaded part is also over here so we'll use a multitude of colors for this problem, since we've already used two, it won't harm to use more. There's a point here. Um, there's a point here. There's a point here. There's another point here. There's a point here. There's a point here. And there's a point here. So that's seven points. That's seven points. The leftmost is A the this is b not the center one this is c again not the center one the rightmost is d so the problem now asks semicircular arcs a b a c b d and c d divide the circle above into regions the points shown along the diameter line ad divided into six equal parts if AD is equal to 6, what is the total area of the shaded region? Now, if it's equal to 6, we know that each of these little lines are equal to 1. Because that's how we labeled it. So each one is equal to 1. Now, this is actually a little bit of a... Not, a, not exactly tough, but to an extent it is tough. I'm not going to lie. However, it's a lot of calculation. So... For starters, let's find the area of the entire circle, huh? So, so instead of focusing on these small parts first, let's first find the area of the entire circle. So the radius of the entire circle is 1, 2, 3. So the area is 9 pi, because 3 squared is 9. So let's not calculate the pi as well, let's just keep it like that. Now, if you notice very carefully, especially in your book, not as much as in my drawing than in the book, you could see that um, if sir, uh, this line AB, if you slide this part, this 1, 2, 3, 4 unit diameter semicircle into this 4 unit diameter semicircle, then you will get a full circle. Let me let me show you what I mean. It would look something. Oops, no. It would look like this. Um, a full circle, and on the left, like this, and like this. So kind of like a Pepsi sign. However, what we're focusing on is the diameter which is 4. So if we divide it into two separate ones, this is 2. So the radius is 2. So let's find the area of this. And if we, if you want to label it as in the diagram, the leftmost point is A and B. The rightmost point is C and D. So it's a little, little confusing to understand at first, but it's plausible. So the area of this smaller circle will be um will be 4 2 squared is 4 pi okay so if we subtract this area from the entire circle we will only be left with this the double shaded part of the entire region because one shaded part of the region is going to be gone due to the other circle so 
9 pi minus minus that is equal to 5 pi if I'm correct okay so but we need to also include this shaded region as well the, these two also make up a circle they make up a smaller circle so this is A and C and this is B and D so uh, if this is also the, the diameter of 2 so it has a radius of 1 I, I don't know I'm kind of tripping over my own words here however the area of this is just pi so that is also including part of the shaded region of the big circle so pi plus 5 pi is gonna be the total area of the shaded region of the circle which is 6 pi so that is choice C so in this problem you just have to visualize a little bit closer on what's going on in the problem so either way I think I've done enough for this video lots of scribbling and different colors however Next video, I will hope to finish up this section, and maybe I will do another video after that. I'm not sure. So, hope this helped you with your math preparation. I almost said hope you enjoyed this. However, you need to understand it more than enjoying. So, I'll see you in the next video.